Making the decision to check into rehab and get clean from addiction often first means hitting rock bottom. After 10 years of illegal drug use tonight, one Treasure Valley mom is more thankful to be alive than ever. Six on your side's Karen Lair has her story of overcoming addiction in tonight's installment of Finding Hope. Can you say hi to grandma? Say hi. hi. Life doesn't always go as planned. Just ask Cassidy Mendoza. I mean, I thought it was going to be like everybody else, go to college, I would, you know, get married, have a family. I didn't know that I would be married to somebody that didn't want the best thing for me. The new mom is celebrating six years of sobriety after living nearly a decade from fix to fix. When it starts out slow, you know, just a few here and there, and then all of a sudden, I'm taking five at a time. Eventually, her days revolved entirely around finding and doing drugs. We just go from doctor to doctor, ER to ER, and that, that was my job to make sure that we were high all day. After falling in love with a drug addict, the former Nampa High cheer captain ended up hooked on methamphetamine, morphine, Percocets, and pretty much anything she and her then husband could get their hands on. Doing the opioids, it made me feel like I could just lose myself. I didn't have to worry about um, grief. I didn't have to worry about pain. Eight years in, her husband died of an opioid overdose. The coroner called me and said that there was lines of pills sitting out. They were sitting there waiting, so it was an accident. But even that wasn't enough to push Mendoza to seek a sober life. I still didn't even get it. I didn't get it. So I go through the funeral. I go through everything. Um, and I'm taking more pills, so this time I'm, I'm up to the big time stuff, Oxycontin, snorting up pills now by myself, I mean Vicodin, all, everything. Eventually, lying became easier than telling the truth. I was so ashamed. <laughs> I lost 10 years. I mean, there's years that I don't remember. Cassidy says she'd resort to stealing money from her own mother to get high. <laughs> and that really made me feel bad in the whole world. If anything did, that I hurt her. Then in 2010, another wake up call when Cassidy fell asleep driving on the highway near New Plymouth high on morphine and stolen methadone. Three or four days later, I wake up in the hospital and the doctor asked me, why do you have methadone in your system? <laughs> I'm an addict, so I'm not going to tell the truth, right? But surgeries to repair her crushed left arm just led her back to her biggest foe. 300 pain pills gone in two days. But I didn't care. I didn't even, you know, I'm just kind of floating through life not knowing what's going on or who I'm affecting. Fast forward through two more years of regular drug use and with a strong push from her supportive mother, Cassidy had an option. I'm forever grateful to her. Go to rehab or go to jail. You can either be stubborn and continue a life of chaos, or you can turn it around and use that strength to get out of it. And that's what she did. It wasn't easy, and withdrawal was even worse than she imagined. I was sick for weeks. But 90 days later, Cassidy walked out of those doors with the tools she needed to stay clean. And on May 10th, she celebrated six years drug free. Now, encouraging others struggling with addiction to know their strength. We're strong women and strong men. We're strong people. We can do this. Take a Tylenol instead of a Percocet. Her biggest inspiration to keep clean. Choose your reward. Baby Marley. For sure. Karen Lair. Marley is joy. Six on your side. So there's so much more to her story too. We could only fit so much in. So we put an extended interview online. If maybe you know someone that could benefit from hearing the whole story. It's on our website, sixonyourside.com. I'm, I'm, I'm just so impressed that she's so brave to share it. So well, boldly. and the support yeah. from the mother. Yes, the her mother never gave up and it helped. Starts now. The state of Idaho has not been spared from the opioid epidemic wreaking havoc on states across the country. The number of overdoses on the rise. The number of arrests on the rise. The amount of drugs seized off Idaho's highways. Yeah, you guessed it on the rise. Six on your side's Karen Lair joins us with more on where these drugs are coming from in tonight's Finding Hope. While some drug users are getting high on prescription painkillers picked up at their local pharmacy, many others are turning to heroin. And as I found out, most of that is entering our communities from Utah.
Every single day, somebody's tripping to Utah and bringing back heroin. The number one drug problem plaguing state police is trafficked into Idaho communities seven days a week. It's becoming more and more frequent. Five years ago, we were seeing almost none, and right now, it's the biggest problem that we have in southeast Idaho. Opioids, highly addictive and potentially fatal. We can see anywhere from users to have the tiniest amounts to the traffickers that have ounces, you know, and up to pounds of it. Most drug related investigations changing with the times, shifting focus from methamphetamine to heroin. Is there anything illegal in your car? It started a couple years ago in small quantity stuff. It started with points, which is a tenth of a gram. Now it's moved on past that into grams and ounces, and we've seen um, a couple different cases where people are bringing in a half pound to a pound of heroin at a time. From 2011 to 2016, state police saw a 958% increase in the number of heroin positive items tested by state labs. We're dealing with several of these instances every week. The highest amounts coming from Ada County. Out of my last six evaluations, four of those have come up with some sort of opiate in their system. But where are the drugs coming from? Turns out most are transported into the state from Utah. The vast majority of the cases that we work is being sourced out of Salt Lake City. ISP officials say somebody can just drive down to Salt Lake City, buy about a gram of heroin for $50, then drive that same amount back into Idaho and sell it for at least three times that amount. Two hours each way, yeah, so a four hour round trip and it's they could double their money. When it comes to heroin trafficking, that's anything more than two grams. The number of state lab cases more than doubled between 2015 and 2016. Canyon County seeing the highest rate increase, but falls fourth in the state behind Ada, Bannock and Kootenai counties. We don't have enough people, money or manpower to work all the heroin cases that we could work. Come here. Corporal Tyler Shireman and his K-9 bingo in Pocatello assist in traffic stops throughout District 5, often leading to drug-related arrests. We ran the dog around, dog alerted on the driver's door, jumped in, and then right here on the, you know, underneath the driver's seat area. So one shoe box in there that just has one baggie in it that's torn on the corner. But police say their opioid problems don't end with heroin. According to the CDC, for every 100 people in the Gem State, there are 86 painkiller prescriptions. I know it's prescription medication, but people are obtaining these for illicit use, basically using it to get high and it not in accordance to a prescription. Most of the times they're not even prescribed the medication. CDC officials say 46 people die from prescription painkiller overdoses each day in the United States and sadly some of those are in Idaho. Many law enforcement agencies now arming officers with Narcan, a nasal spray that counteracts the life threatening effects of an opioid overdose. Mostly young 18 to 25 year old kids and we're having a significant number of overdoses and deaths resulting from heroin and opioid use. Meridian police officer Jake Simon says he personally sees many of those users then take the wheel. And it is scary to think of the, the amount of impairment I can see in somebody on heroin or heavy dose of an opiate, um, it's, it's scary to think that they would get behind the wheel of a three, four, five, six thousand pound vehicle and drive down the road. Impacts to the public stretch beyond the scope of road safety, also leading to an uptick in crime. Either through a petty theft, a minor theft situation, or even vehicle burglaries, they're using these types of situations to fund their habit. A growing problem, police say, shows no signs of slowing down. In Idaho, heroin also carries mandatory minimum sentences. That means if you're caught with more than two grams, you'll face at least three years in prison and a minimum $10,000 fine. Depending on the amount in possession, offenders could face up to life in prison. Reporting in studio, I'm Karen Lair, six on your side. And this story is part of our new year-long initiative to help stop the growing opioid crisis in Idaho. Our Finding Hope series is committed to looking at the epidemic from every angle especially yours. Share your story, your thoughts, questions, and concerns with us. Send us an email or a message on Facebook. You will see all of our Finding Hope stories on our website, sixonyourside.com.
Welcome back to Good Morning Idaho. You've seen it on store shelves, and if you've lived long enough in Idaho, you've definitely tasted it for yourself. Oh yeah, this month the Idaho Candy Company is dishing out sweet treats for the holidays by the truckload. Six on your sides, Karen Lair takes us inside the factory to learn more about the iconic candy made in Idaho. Different colored, old-fashioned nostalgic candies is really what we do. It may not look like Santa's workshop, but inside this historic Boise storefront, you'll find a crew cranking out Christmas candy faster than the North Pole. We start Christmas usually in September is actually when we start gearing up staff. David Wagers is now the president of the company, but especially around the holidays, he prefers his other title. On my business cards, I go by Candyman. Candy so man. that's much more fun to be Candyman than president. The Candyman will tell you the company's become an iconic fixture in the candy making industry and he has a fair point. I mean, where else can you find a candy bar named after a potato? For more than a century, Idaho Candy Company has prepped, produced, and packaged Willy Wonka-sized shipments of peanut brittle, butter toffee, lemon drops, and Idaho spuds right in the heart of downtown Boise. We do 30,000 Idaho spud bars a day. We'll do a couple million of those a year. We sell them in gift boxes. People ship them all over the country. And when you're around for that long, you can't help but become a fan favorite in the community. We have customers that are well over 50 years old that continue to give our candy as a representation of their company, which is awesome for both of us. And inside this factory, tradition is important. We are an old nostalgic candy company and you can't form a new old nostalgic candy company. Not only are they still serving up the same sweet staples a lifetime later, but they're using some of the same equipment dating back to the 19 teens and 20s. We're very good at fixing things. Nobody else works on these machines but us because nobody else knows how to fix them. And true to their Idaho roots, the company buys many of their individual ingredients from which within the Treasure Valley. Well, we are we are Idaho Candy Company and, and for that means we are live and die by Idaho. So we're always trying to say can we get legitimate sources of our products locally where we can buy them and use them so we support other Idaho families. A tradition as sweet as it looks. It's still a small business feel. Karen Laird, six on your side. Yeah. Yum, those look good. <laughs> so good. Yeah, and if you want to get your treats straight from the source, they have a storefront at the factory on 8th Street, free samples included. Yeah, it's a fun like place that. to visit. And spread the word to your out-of-state friends, too. Idaho Candy Company distributes to retailers in 12 states across wow. the country. Those little potatoes are what I always mail to yep. everyone out oh, of state. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Send something Idaho, and at Christmas yeah. time, it's got to be edible stuff, right? Nice. Candy's always oh, a hit. Perfect for the stockings. Uh -huh. right sure. in. Yep.